Hello, my little sweet baby reader pop. These are not the five star reads, don't worry. This is actually my TBR pile right here, but this is my fourth book video and I have yet to do a recommendations video. I'm scared to make this video in case next week I read another book that's like an absolute five star banger of a book and then I didn't put it in this video, but then I realized I already have quite a few books that I think everyone would love. Well, you can't really say that, but I am very particular with my five stars. I give most books that I love four stars, but these five star reads are like top tier for me. So I thought I would share these with you. They're all fiction books. I'm gonna do a separate video for my favorite Christian books of all time because I could ramble about those for so long. I'm so excited about it. So let's just get into it. I'm just gonna start with the the absolute best book ever. Um, this is a large statement. Okay, here's another thing. I don't like to hype up books because it just, the expectations become so high. So when you're reading the book, you're really reading like a false expectation rather than just enjoying the book and discovering it for yourself because that's what I did with this book. I just discovered it for myself and that's what made it amazing. The Atlas Six by Olive Blake. This book is gaining some traction on TikTok right now. I've seen it on a lot of people's TBR lists, but oh my gosh, first of all, I love the cover so much. I love matte covers. A lot of people don't because it gets fingerprints on it, but it just feels velvety smooth. It's so simple. And I really don't like a lot of fantasy books because of their covers, honestly. This is a self-published book. And a lot of people think that self-published means that they're bad, but no. That's just absolutely not true. And this book proves it. And I'm so proud of her for getting so much traction when it's self-published, which is obviously quite the feat. So let me just try to make you want to read this book. So it is a fantasy book, but it basically takes place in the real world. But the only difference is that when the Alexandrian library burned down, it didn't actually burn down. And the library was full of secret magic. So there's this Alexandrian society who are the caretakers of the Alexandrian library because it's full of secrets, things that you know, regular people who don't do magic can't know about. So this book follows the six people who are chosen to basically be initiated into the Alexandrian society. They are the best of the best of the best of magicians. And by magicians, I mean, we have like a mind reader, an empath, who can like feel people's emotions and like manipulate their emotions. Two characters who can control the elements. There's a girl who can control like plants and stuff. <laughs> It's so weird to explain like it doesn't sound good when I explain it The magic is super easy to understand though And that's something that I love about this book because so many fantasy books I buy But then I get so overwhelmed to read them because the world building is just too much And then reading it takes more brain power because you're reading made-up words half the time and this book is not like that Like it's basically just the real world except they have this library and they find out that only five people are going to actually be initiated And so it becomes a competition you watch as they try to figure out, okay, are we gonna like partner up? Are we gonna ally with cer certain people? So there's competition, there's angst, there's academic rivals to lovers, kind of. It starts in this book. I'm sure they'll actually become lovers in the second book, which doesn't come out until 2022. The second that book comes out, I'm buying it and I'm reading it immediately. I can't really, it, like the six characters in this book, you love them so, 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 so much. But then also what they're studying from the Alexandrian library is so interesting. Like there's actually a lot of talk about physics and the concept of time. There's some time travel. It's just, it's so good. And it's not confusing either. Like that's the best part about this book is it's just so nice and it has that dark academia vibe. You need to read this like this is the type of book where if you don't even like fantasy I'd be like this is the book for you because I don't even read that much I really don't read much fantasy at all, but this book I like more than the romance books that I love so you oh my gosh Just read this book Olivia Blake needs to publish so many more books and I cannot wait for the second one to come out I don't know if it's gonna be more than two books But I will be reading everything that she publishes because wow Oh, and if you're one of those people who like loves morally gray characters here you go, have fun with that one. <sighs> this romance book, I feel like the people who do read it love it with all of their hearts, but it's not something that's super hyped up. And if anything should be hyped up, it is this book. Love in Other Words by Christina Lauren. You probably know these authors from The Unhoneymooners. What's that? Josh and Hazel's Guide to Not Dating. They just published The Soulmate Equation. They have all of these books and this one is their absolute best, I believe. But this, oh my gosh, this is basically a childhood friends to lovers, except they don't talk for 10 years. One of those tropes, kind of like people we meet on vacation and it has the alternating timelines, which I know some people don't like, but this book does it so well. And because it's alternating timelines and you don't know what happened to separate them, I couldn't stop reading this. Like this was one of those books that I just had to read in one sitting because I had to find out why they haven't spoken to each other and if that reason was actually worth it. Because so many of the books, they have that trope where like they don't talk for 
10 years and then the reason that they didn't talk is so stupid and you're like why is that the entire reason i've been reading these alternating timelines just to get to the end of the book and the stupid reason is like some miscommunication but no it was heartbreaking at the end i actually cried reading this one this book made me realize that childhood friends to lovers is probably my favorite trope because there are just different emotions when you fall in love as a teenager like the angst that they experience is angst on a different level because they were teenagers you know what i mean and they're both book lovers another weirdly specific trope that i love is when they're smart <laughs> so 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 good just read it <laughs> I'm not gonna talk about this one for too long because it is so hyped up and I know everyone is like sick of hearing about it. The Beach Read by Emily Henry. This book is hyped up for a reason and I love it. Out of every book I've read so far, I want to reread this one the most. I see some people's review of this and they don't like it and I'm like, genuinely were we reading the same book because another weirdly specific trope i love is academic rivals to lovers and that is what augustus everett and what the freak is her name january andrews are they're both authors so they're both smart and they love books kind of like in this one okay so you're seeing a theme of what i like and it also deals with so much more than just romance like something i've learned that i don't like is when the characters only have character development when it happens to be about their love interest like their only thoughts their only feelings are about the love interest but in but in this book, both characters clearly have their own struggles, which makes them more human. And it makes you really care about them because they're more well-rounded as characters. So then when it comes to the relationship, it makes it even more special because you know what they're dealing with in their own lives. I mean, if you haven't read this, I recommend it. I love Emily Henry's writing. I cannot wait for her new book, Book Lovers, in 2022. Oh my gosh, next year is gonna be an amazing reading year. The follow-up to Alice Six, Book Lovers by Emily Henry. Emily Henry, can I please have an arc? That's an advanced reader's copy for y'all who don't know. Okay, the next two are by Colleen Hoover. Ugly Love. If you haven't read this, you need to. I sobbed at the end. It's such a quick read. I think I read this in five hours. This is also alternating timelines. One of the timelines she writes in kind of like a poetry style, which was beautiful and heartbreaking and easy to read. And I'm seeing a trend where I love characters that have a dark past or are dealing with something dark because that's the same in this book. So also, if you can't tell when I give book recommendations, I really don't tell you like how they meet or who they are because I just feel like that's so fun to figure out once you start reading the book because I'll hear some book recommendations where they tell you like exactly how they meet exactly how they end up blah blah and so they just explain like the first four chapters to you so it's no longer fun when I actually read it so let me know if you like that or if you want me to give more context than I'm giving right now but honestly if any video you take my book recommendation just blindly, this is the video to do it because like I said, my only five stars. Okay, next up is actually a thriller and that is Verity. This has the same cover as the Atlas Six where they're like velvety smooth. I love that so much. I did not know this was a thriller when I bought it and it definitely was scary, but it's a romantic thriller, which I think is so unique. I don't know how many books are thrillers with also romance. I'm sure there's a lot. Please give me a rec if you have some, but this was one of those books that I just couldn't put down. Like you just, you want to find out what happens so so bad that you just you soar through this book it's so fun to read she's an author in it i feel like colleen hoover really likes to talk about being an author through her characters and i love that so much this is one of those endings where it's kind of up for your interpretation which usually i find lazy on the author's part but not in this one because it seemed very thought out and um you can basically like be in two camps of what you believe to be is true which is so fun makes for such great discussion on this book i'll explain very briefly what this book is about and then you guys can tell me if you like me to explain or if you don't like me to explain so basically there's this girl named lowen and she's a struggling author and then all of a sudden her agency is like oh Oh, there's actually this author who can't write anymore because she was in some sort of accident and she wants you to finish her series for her and we're gonna pay you a lot of money to do so so she agrees because she needs the money she moves into the house of the author and her husband the author's husband who can't write the book is this confusing his name is jeremy jeremy crawford and she needs to just go to the house so that she can go through this previous author verity's office just do the research so that she can finish this series up but obviously the romance ensues between verity's husband jeremy and lowen starts to discover tons of secrets from verity's office and um it just gets super crazy from then on it's spooky but not in not in a weird spooky way like i will not read thrillers that are paranormal if you don't like thrillers this is a perfect start because it's not like that it's just kind of like creepy in like a human being sense not like a parent any of that stuff so for that reason i love verity it was five stars the ending had my jaw on the floor and i love when a book can do that so 
Yes, highly recommend. And the last books that I'm going to recommend because I rated them five stars is an entire 10 book series, technically two series that you read together. And that is The Addicted Series by Krista and Becca Ritchie. And then this is the Calloway Sisters series. As you can see, these books are thick, but you read these intertwined. So I will put up the suggested reading order. So you read like the first three books from The Addicted Series, and then you read Kiss the Sky from the Calloway Sisters series, and then blah, blah, it just goes on like that. So far, I've only read the first three books and I'm on Kiss the Sky currently. I've heard that if you're a fan of Gossip Girl then you would really love this series. I've never seen Gossip Girl so I wouldn't know but you basically have all these three sisters who their parents are like billionaires and <laughs> they're super rich and they all find love and you basically just get to read about their lives and all the drama and the friend group and you just absolutely fall in love and become obsessed with every single character and they're all super flawed characters like as much as you love them you also know their deepest dark secrets and things that are negative about them and that's what makes you love them even more because that makes them feel so human and so real. I've heard that people think that the first two books are slow and not enjoyable and a lot of people quit after these. I personally did not feel that way at all. I am a Lily Calloway and Lauren Hale stand for the rest of my life. Stand? Stand. Okay, I'm not trendy enough to say that clearly because I messed it up. I love them so much and these first three books are like from their point of views. But y'all, read the first two books and do not give up until you read Addicted for Now, or no, Addict, yeah. <laughs> until you read the third book because holy crap I don't really like react when I read books like something crazy could be happening and my face is just blank but this book had me laughing out loud gasping and like smiling like this book so many emotions and it actually keeps you on the edge of your seat even though it's like a romance book each chapter ends and you're like oh my gosh what happens it almost feels like what a thriller does except it's not it's not a thriller at all it's just like a fun romance drama about their lives i'm doing an entire video reading this entire series because i know it's gonna go down as one of my favorite books of all time and I'm only on the fourth one, but I just know that like I'm already so obsessed with it And I guess you would consider Krista and Becca Ritchie more like indie authors because I mean you can probably tell like by these covers that they're not Published by someone mainstream. I think I'm not sure and so you would look at these and be like, oh, what is this? Like this is it looks bad, but it's so good and speaking of academic rivals to lovers and people who are smart <sighs> I won't say more. Okay, that's all the books that I have given five stars so far. Um, that's only from like two and a half months of reading. So <laughs> I've been blessed with reading amazing books so far. And I'm sure by the end of the year, I'm gonna have so many more and I will do this video all over again with all of my favorite books of all time. So let me know if you're gonna read any of these, if you've read any of these, if you agree, disagree, and what your five star reads are so that I can read some of them. And I just love these book videos so much and I love you so much and I'll see you somewhere else on the internet. Bye. I do